right people this is a pre-race or post race update pre-race for silverstone post from snitterton so as you can see there's one boxing bits down here so what happened was where's that sixth gear josh so if you saw the other video then you realise we had that weird noise in sixth gear. And that is what is left of sixth gear. It also did some damage to the sleeve, I'm not sure where that is. No, the sleeve caused it. Do we think the sleeve caused it? So basically we run a, because this is a fifth gear, in a normal gearbox, we run this as a sixth gear. So this internal diameter is bigger, so you put a sleeve in here so that it fits. And it looks like this sleeve, for whatever reason, failed and started to bind up on the gear, which is in the end caused all this. Obviously, we don't know if that's why that's done that, or if it was the heat that started it, because obviously it was super hot at Snetton. So it's also done some damage to fourth gear as well which is a jdm fourth gear which we don't have a replacement for so what we've done is as we only had three weeks between races we've dismantled the accord <laughs> as you can see um i was breaking this anyway so it wasn't a real big issue so the accord has an ep3 a full ep3 gear set in it so we've pulled that ep3 gear set out of the accord gearbox and fitted that gear set into our casing out the EG. We're just gonna run stock gears for this event. We're gonna rebuild the other gear set with a new sleeve, a new fourth gear, and I'm gonna send the diff off to get checked and probably rebuilt. This Accord has a CAS in it also, LSD, so we're just using that one. So that's that. Josh stripped all this out after work on Friday. Swapped everything over yesterday and got it back in. As you can see, it's all back together. So the Accord had a gearbox cooler on it as well. So we've stole that off the Accord and we're going to fit that. Well, the reason I didn't put the cooler on in the first place because there was literally no space to put it anywhere. Yeah, it's really, obviously, really tight. Like could have really done with one, but... but uh, so it has a gearbox, it has a pump that feeds a cooler which we're just gonna mount behind there. We're gonna mount the pump just above that splitter bracket there. So obviously you gain with the cooling and the extra capacity of oil that you uh, gain from having the cooler and the lines and stuff. So hopefully that helps and we don't have any more failures. But uh, we, we can't um, actually monitor our gearbox temps. So uh, we're a bit in the dark as to actually how hot it got, but it got pretty hot, I think. I think engine oil was over 130 degrees, even with an oil cooler, so it's fair to say the gearbox was higher than that. So that's that. Um, drive shaft also started to fail again, so we fitted a new inner CV. I think it's actually all right. It just had absolutely no grease left in it because it got too hot. Right, so it forced the grease out, basically. There was no grease left in the boot on the inner. Same one that failed at Croft, same side, so that's another thing we've had to change. Um, and we're out of brake pads, so we've got some new pads there, and new rears as well. So that's that for the EG. Hopefully we just need to put this back together, get everything working and test it, as in drive it down the road, because there's no time to actually go testing. So that's the EG, so back to the Accord, so... As I say, I'm breaking it. Well, I think I'm going to put it back to a standard-ish sort of car. So I've sold some bits already and a lad's coming today, hopefully, to buy the turbo kit. As you can see it all laid out on here. There's a sump. Yeah, the cast sump on it, even though the K24s do come with a steel sump on normally. So yeah, I think Rory's coming today to have a look at this. So there's the turbo set up. So it's just a China GT30. It's done about 6,000 miles, maybe a bit more actually. And it's still perfectly fine. Cast turbo log manifold and the turbo smart 38mm wastegate. The only problem we've ever had is these bolts back out. 
with the different heat I think when they get real hot these back out and this comes loose so we welded it to the manifold and we haven't had any problems since but yeah hopefully Rory buys that today and I think he's possibly going to be buying these wheels as well so I was in two minds about selling these but I think money could be better elsewhere so I think he's going to have these for his DC5 race car possibly what else is sold? some suspension stuff sold off it and I think a lad's having the Barotechnics engine mount so I took them off that's about it so far i'll probably pick up a stock k24 for it to put it back to standard although it'll still be running caper and stuff like that but um it's too much work to put it back to totally standard so the only other progress mike's gone to australia now so we have no media mic these cars are just the same s2000 still yeah, broke he's gone on holiday to australia he made it sound like he just vanished <laughs> No, he's gone all day and his mate's getting married, I think, isn't he? And I think Mike's best man, possibly. Uh, and the only other updates is I've done some more on the third gen. Wow, these lights do not go well on this camera. Is it flicker? Flicker, yeah. Yeah, I painted the roof last weekend. Came out pretty good. Found a bit of rot down here. So we just got that to weld up. Started prepping everything else, painted the back panel when I painted the roof. That was just a quick blow over. So I think today, after I've finished taking some few more bits off the Accord, I'm going to um, paint this side. Just got a bit of prep to do down here. And that should be it. The new third gen wheels. These are... Group B Unlimited. NCO ones, eight for fifteen, ET thirty-five, and for the front, the third gen. And I also picked up these Wedge Sport Courages, only fourteen, unfortunately, but super rare, and super cool. Um, I did have a set before, but I sold them because I wanted to run bigger front brakes. So I would have only been able to run them on the rear and I thought it was a bit of a waste. So I sold the full set and then these, this pair popped up so I grabbed them. So that's that. We haven't really done a Silverstone vlog because Mike was away. So we just kind of put the raw footage up. But we had some damage from clipping the M3 we was having a good race with. Took the can hard off smashed the splitter, took that bit out as well, so I think we had a bit of contact with an Audi A3 as well. If you follow me on Instagram you'll have seen that I posted that um, that's it for racing for us this year. Uh, we only prepaid for those five events, so we're going to start prepping the car for next year basically. See if we can get on par with those front running lads that Exige and the TCR car or cars and the e 46 m3 so we've left this on the trailer for now and i'm getting on with well me and josh are getting on with the third gen because i hope to have that out next year i might do some time attack events in it in the retro class that's what i'm hoping to do so oh yeah the other thing about silverstone was um after the race well even after qualifying we had a water leak which seemed like it was just the hose clamp that had come loose somehow so we tightened that up, stopped the leak. But when Josh came in after the race, we had another leak on the top hose, which it became apparent that the water system is getting pressurized. So I think we have a slight head gasket problem. So this engine is gonna come out. The engine out the Accord, which is, that was an unknown engine that effectively, what was running in the EG. Breakage yard special, you might say. This engine, we know it was a 70,000 mile motor and I've put about 12,000 on that so we know it's a good motor, it's all prepped, ready, it's got the baffling, everything so the plan is to put this engine into the EG as it is just swap obviously everything around it the engine out the EG is going to get rebuilt and I'm going to put that into the third jet so as we're rebuilding I'm going to put higher comp pistons in it and some rods. I'm gonna leave the head for now. I'm just gonna build the bottom end, put the head on, 
just with the existing Type R cams that are in it and see what it does. I say I'm open to running Time Attack Retro class hopefully, which is for cars over 25 years old. Um, there's some fast stuff in there though, there's a K20 Turbo, Peugeot 205 and stuff. So we're going to be up against it, stay in NA, but I think it'll be good fun. So yeah, I've painted this side as you saw previously. Um, Josh is just welding the gussets into the cage, as you can see. I was hoping to put some on the air pillars, but I then take the screen out. I'll get the screen took out in case it breaks, because I just won't be able to get one. So we're gonna have to leave the air pillars, and I'm just gonna put another one, another gusset here, um, and that's that. And then. I've just stuck the pedal box back in because we're just measuring up to put a hydraulic clutch pedal in. So that's Josh's next job after the gussets. I'm going to cut that bulkhead out and plate it, reinforce it to mount the clutch pedal. So yeah, that's where we're up to with the third. Yeah. Josh has started taking the S2000s apart. I don't know if we mentioned in a previous video that it was uh, it had a misfire after 4000 RPM. Shortly after that developed, it started breathing heavy out the breather system. So Josh has took it apart and we found... So number four was it? It was still number four that was sucking the plug up and misfire on. It's, it was just cracked but I've managed to peel out. Yeah, so the piston had cracked between the rings and it's just took the other pistons out and it seems like all the others were doing the same thing. No, just number two. Oh, just number two. Four and two. Yeah, so you can see, see there the starting yeah. to grow. So, yeah, they are Nippon cast pistons and they were lower compression. It's not to do with the fact that there was Nippon. No. Just... Yeah, were, I'm saying they're not forged pistons oh. there, were they? It's been two minds what to do at the minute, whether to put Nippon pistons back in it or to put stock pistons back in because it is slightly better with the stock compression. Um, obviously, those Nippons are, I think, 9 to 1. It's quite low, so you don't get... It drives better. Yeah, it drives better on the stock pistons. And obviously, you'll probably have to turn it down for that, but at least it would be reliable then. So that's where he's up to at the minute. Everything's off, as you can see. He just needs to get that back together, and before it goes back on the road, he's going to finally fit his Brembo's once he gets the caliper brackets and the discs to suit and I think there's a front wheel speed sensor to set up as well so yeah that's where we're up to I'll uh, hopefully be painting the other side of this car next weekend if Josh gets the welding finished uh, Josh welded up that rust patch yesterday so I filled it today put it in primer and yeah this side's just about ready to paint uh, once we get these rest of these gussets in, I'll start prepping that. Yeah, so that's it for now. I'll uh, keep you updated on the fair gen and the S2000 builds as they go. See you soon.